Blue Planet Project is a project of my organization in Canada called the Council of Canadians. Um, and we are fighting for the right to water around the world. We work very closely with Food and Water Watch here in the United States and many organizations around the world building this global water justice movement. And we believe that um, if you ask the question, who owns water, we say the answer is nobody owns water. It belongs to the earth. It belongs to all species. It belongs to future generations. It's a fundamental human right and it's public trust. Uh, and so we feel very strongly that we have to, we, we in the global north, in our movements, have to be supportive and act in solidarity with the global south where they don't have the resources and they, you know, sometimes we'll be working with groups who have, you know, one computer held together by duct tape sort of thing and it's really helpful if we can, you know, not come down and rescue them because this is, that's a terrible model and that's not what we're talking about, but rather sharing resources, sharing um, information, sometimes sharing, actually sharing, you know, getting some funding for the projects that are happening there. So that's what we do in, at the Blue Planet Project. We also challenge what we call the Lords of Water, and this is the World Water, Water Council, which is um, uh, um, um, an international organization that made up of members from the United Nations and the World Bank and the big water companies and the, and the water services um, development agencies of northern countries like Canada and the U.S. And they come together in this big world water forum every three years and they, you know, they announce that all, everybody agrees that a private future for water has been agreed to. And we say, not so fast. The people of the world haven't quite agreed to this. So we go to these forums and we challenge them. We get up to the mics and we challenge them from the floor and we challenge them to, in the media and we bring our own people and we tell the stories of what privatization and, and lack of government support for water has done in communities around the world. And so we tell that truth, if you will, to their power and um, they're not so fond of us, but that's okay because, you know, you, you got to take your lumps. Um, and so we're, we're, at the same time that we're working in communities for local support and control of water, we're challenging the World Trade Organization, the World Bank, the Asia Development Bank, and the Inter-American Development Bank, the United Nations when we need to, although we also work with the United Nations because it's kind of schizophrenic around this issue, so there's good parts of it as well. Um, and just we just challenge these these uh, power brokers who are making decisions around the future of water for people all over the world um, without their permission. So it's we kind of try to act as a broker in a way between that those powerful forces and and some of the truly poorest communities on earth. I mean, I have been in worked in and with um, you know the the wretched of the earth as Franz Fanon called them. You know, it's so it's really. He's just saying, you know, over and over and over again, nobody should have to live like that. Nobody should have to die like that.